Back when I read the book Mastering Your Hidden Self, I came across a concept outlined as energy goes where attention goes. I'm not sure if it is uh, initially in this book that this phrase was given. I guess many other approaches uh, in spirituality, in psychology have been talking about it. It was just the first uh, book I read that into. And at the beginning, I was not really sure how I should apply that and what did it mean exactly. But later, it really gave me a lot of understanding about how reframing works and how reframing, whether it is on your own beliefs, on your own difficult situations or the ones of people you help around you, how this concept can really help understanding how reframing can be used more easily than what most people think. Uh, many people think of reframing as a very complex tactical set of language tactics that they never really know what to start with. They struggle with trying to prove people wrong with logical statements, oh you should believe in this because that, that, that and they may, they may enumerate a thousand facts for why it should be the thing to believe into or to reassure themselves, I should believe this because... But in the end, they don't change that much or they put a mask on their feelings but the feelings are still there and people who listen may be like, eh, eh, okay, but not really uh, act deeply upon the change that is being suggested. And in the end, no belief, as you may know, no belief is true or false in itself. It is simply different maps of the world, which is where this concept of attention uh, comes into play. I came to translate personally this concept of energy goes where attention goes as a simple spotlight. You simply attribute, allocate more mental and emotional focus uh, energy energy to a certain concept or criteria that defines you or that define the situation around you. Same thing with people, you may notice they put so much more focus on one specific detail or one version of reality that for whatever reason they have allocated more emotional resources to energy goes where attention goes. When they focus the spotlight more on this corner of the picture, they will just see this all the time and always make that repeat again and again. Self-fulfilling prophecy, nothing new here. So to clarify, it is more to me about how can we decrease the spotlight uh, since nothing is never really true and nothing is never really false. It is just a matter of where is your spotlight right now about your life or the life of your clients? Where do they put their spotlight? The idea, in my opinion, is to is about decreasing, lowering the spot the level of spotlight, the amount of spotlight on what is negative or the negative way of describing their situation and improving, uh, hiring up, leveling up the spotlight, in, uh, increasing the spotlight on what could go right and what could make me improve and what can make me feel better right now. And very important, both of them are, in, uh, are required. It's not just one or just the other. Both of them are required because the two main problems I have noticed with limiting beliefs, uh, like most people fall into one or the other. The first one is to only keep describing and digging into the problem and absorbing, getting into that victim mentality of nothing is my fault, it's always the fault of whatever it is, the government, society, parents, siblings, uh, past trauma, so because I had this trauma, nothing can change anymore. There's often like a victim mentality where people keep describing reasons for why they can't. And the other uh, problem is trying to hide the negative, which is there if the spotlight of somebody has been stuck on very negative events of their life for 20 years, that amount of emotional energy is still there and that needs to be addressed. So the second problem is when people completely want to ignore that doesn't happen, doesn't happen, doesn't happen, and only want to focus on increasing the spotlight on the positive things, but without addressing the negative. You will see that pretty often with um, kind of the kind of bullshit version of personal development, which is just about to use affirmations, uh, just repeat them, repeat them, re repeat them, but with, uh, without ever addressing the main reason why you did not believe in yourself in the first place, or the reason why you felt trapped in your life in the first place. All those things, 
It is a mistake, in my opinion, to dig too much into the past, but it is also a mistake to not address it at all. So the idea is to first unload and clarify what happened, unload the emotional pressure linked with the negative spotlight, the things you have allocated too much mental energy, but that were negative. And once we have reframed that, then go on to building up more uh, the roots around what can be positive. For example, once you have elaborated on the main reason why your life is stuck or why the life of your client is stuck, whoever you work on. Um, once you have elaborated that, one thing I like to do is giving, for example, uh, searching for other terms, more positive terms to describe their situation. For example, if they say uh, my life is uh, garbage because my wife left me, for example, okay, would you have a better way of describing what she did or what he did if he, if he was your husband? Do you have a better way of describing or less dramatic way of describing what happened? If the guy says, my, life, uh, my wife left me, so now I feel like garbage and nothing will change anymore. Okay, if you were, for example, to put yourself in the shoes of your ex-wife, what do you think was her intention, for example? Only a few mental tweaks up to the point where the, the client can find at least a softened, uh, more positive way of describing what happened. For example, he might come uh, at the conclusion by himself that, well, his wife was just feeling uh, trapped in her relationship and she had to get some freedom again. Okay, that is where the reframing happens. So your wife was feeling trapped and she was looking for freedom. How is it possible that somebody looking for freedom makes you feel like garbage. That's where we play with the, the cause and effect structure. When people have identified their life is shit because this happened, once we have uh, given a better term, a better spotlight, a more positive spotlight on the, the cause that made them suffer, for example, my wife did not leave me because she was bad, my wife left me because she was looking for more freedom. How can this mean that, coming from the meta model, how can a person looking for freedom makes you feel like garbage? garbage. That doesn't make sense. And that wouldn't make sense for anybody other than you anyway. If you were to look at somebody else who would be saying that, you would be like, what? So I have noticed that whenever I ask this kind of question to somebody, they find the right reframing by themselves. They just unload some emotional pressure or they come down to another negative experience that was deeper. Oh, when I was a child, my um, uh, mother left me in the same way. So now Okay, we have a whole repetitive pattern here. Uh, same thing, we can work on that in the, same, in the same exact way. And I use this process until the client starts to really find a more positive, a healthier way of describing his life. It has to come from them. If I try to force that into their head, there will be massive resistance. And if it is a reframing of my own, they might just say, yeah, it works for you, but not for me. So when I make them find their own version of how could they describe their situation with a better spotlight, then they already start to feel a bit better. Next, we go into the second part, increasing, improving, hiring up, leveling up the spotlight on this positive thing. So how can we build the roots around that now? And you build the roots by chunking down more specifically. Okay, so now you believe that your wife had the right to uh, engage on a new life of her own and therefore it is time for you to engage on a new life in the same way. That is the basic uh, new belief that client, for example, came to as a conclusion. Not not something I forced in his brain, something I made him discover by himself. Now, okay, you can discover a new life of your own. That is the new belief. Specifically, what does that mean? What will you do tomorrow? What will you do two days from now? How will your life change because of that? Which new perspective will people get by looking at you? When you will talk to people, what will you say to them? Right now, what else can you change about maybe your behavior, maybe your 
clothing, maybe the way you look at people around you, you know, we chunk down to micro details. And that is one way of building more roots around a new positive belief. That way we increase the spotlight because we build more details around the positive version of reality that they live into. And you have certain maps of, maps of the world that are useful and that are propelling people into action and maps of the world that are keeping people stagnant and stuck into the same ruminating thoughts all day long. None of them are true or false. They are just more, more or less useful in terms of advancing through life. The idea of NLP was simply to uh, propel more maps of the world that get people into action, that get people moving in their life, and less maps of the world that kept, keep people stuck into the same negative frame uh, from which they never escape. And they keep blaming other things, other factors for why uh, they are stuck. So this whole concept of energy goes where attention goes, coming more from, from spiritual backgrounds, I thought it had a lot of link with the NLP world. And in the end, uh, NLP was simply modeling many things that worked in many other approaches. So probably at some point, uh, the early developers of NLP have also touched on spirituality to find the useful beliefs that could be applied into modern cybernetics. And this is a concept I found pretty useful over the years for, okay, whatever is happening right now, it is not reality anyway, and whatever is happening, the only meaning this thing has is the one I have consciously give or unconsciously given to it, but the meaning I have given to it at this specific moment does not mean it cannot change. It can always be changed later, and it may not be changed right now with your current surroundings, but maybe somebody else who is more advanced than you has already accessed higher levels of reframing you did not access yet. And that person may have, like Bender for example, or Tony Robbins may have a more useful map of the world than the one you have. Probably not for everything, but for a few things, definitely. It was my two cents on this concept, uh, energy goes where attention goes, from the book Mastering Your Hidden Self. If you want to develop more skills and understand more things about neuro-linguistic programming and how it can improve your life, you have a document down below in the description where you can learn how to improve both your self-confidence, your ability to learn new things faster, and to be more fluent in a coaching session whenever you want to help somebody dealing with their trauma, their limitations, beliefs, all of that. It is down below in the description. Thank you for listening and see you pretty soon.